Wall Lifters. Today I'm here with Ryan John Baptiste, IFBB Pro. For those who don't know who you are, can you briefly tell us about your story and your background? Okay, well, um, I've been on the competing scene. When I'm in competing, I mean going on stage as a physique competitor and being judged on my proportions, my symmetry, and how, my stage presence. So I've been doing that since 2009 um, as a fitness model, and then I've upgraded to men's physique, which is more the in thing right now. And yeah, so I've been doing that since 2009, it's now 2016. I've built my career up and my placings and where I stand in the fitness industry. And I've done pretty well, I must say. <laughs> yeah, so where did you start um, lifting? Did you just pick up some dumbbells, do some bicep curls or what? To be honest, I think because when I was younger, I was doing a lot of different sports. And um, I was doing like athletics, football, boxing. I've done, I've done a number of different sports. And within those sports, you, uh, you had to complement that with weight, weightlifting, resistance training. So I kind of got myself into that through doing those sports. And once all those sports went out the window, weightlifting was left. <laughs> and I actually started to enjoy it. Uh, my physique, my, my body kind of responded quite well to, to it as well. So um, I could see changes. And when you see changes, what happens? You keep doing it, you keep improving keep getting better and that's what happened and I find myself here. You got invited to Mr. Olympia obviously, yeah. that's a um, many man's dream. So how did you get invited and what was your initial reaction? Well um, to get invited to the Mr. Olympia you have to qualify um, and to do that you have to have a pro card. So I got my pro card in 2014 winning the overall at the British finals uh, which is actually two years to the date. Um, so next week, sorry, two years next, next week. Got my pro card. Then you have to qualify. So there's a number of different qualifiers around the world. I actually qualified in San Marino in Italy. Um, you have to come first as well. So I came first in that category. And when I got first, I was like, whoa! I've actually now, now qualified for Men's League Olympia. That was back in November 2015, and. I had basically just under a year to prepare myself for Olympia. So I was excited, I got down to work and you know, it went down. Did you suddenly notice a, a rising popularity with your brand? Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, a lot of people started to follow and follow um, my story and how I've done it and how, how I'm going to do it. Especially when the family man as well, I've got a whole family, got two children, or three children, I've got a wife. And just doing that amongst prepping as well is not, it's not easy, but people appreciate it and I've inspired quite a lot of people and I tend to inspire a lot more doing it, so doing so. Um, yeah, so it has helped me, uh, helped the brand, and yeah, I just love training even more now. You said you love training even more. Did you make any changes to your prep or, or your training? Did you change them at all? To be honest, I've kept it the same. Um, I, my, my rep range is 15 reps. I mean, you might think that's light, it's not. I actually go really heavy 15 reps, so sometimes it's 12 reps, but sometimes you have to rest pause for three more reps, that kind of thing. So I haven't really changed it. Um, I still include all my drop sets, my super sets, uh, giant sets, you name it, you know, it's hard work. And the only thing I've changed is obviously when I get close to the competition, I like to incorporate a lot of cardio. Um, you know, I went to two hours a day cardio. Last, last two and a half weeks, two hours a week, two hours a day cardio. I went in. I mean, I like to, I like to think to myself, if I'm not tired, I'm not battered, uh, I'm not prepping properly, I'm not training hard enough, and that's my, uh, that's my uh, old philosophy. And what's your favourite form of cardio? Uphill walking. I wouldn't say it's my favourite but it's the one that's most effective uh, to me. Um, I've been walking, I like to have an incline of 15 with speed between 4.5 and 5.5 kilometers an hour. Did you change food at all? Uh, yeah, <laughs> believe me I did. I mean, I, I went from off season eating pizza, burgers, 30% of the time to not eating it. Um, so I went from clean from that to clean kind of protein sources from chicken breast, turkey breast, white fish. Those were my main protein sources as I came closer to the competition. 
Um, carb sauces, I did stick to more whole grain, uh, rice and sweet potato. But I must say, I do put in a few cheap days. Not cheap meals, cheap days. And when I mean cheap days, I go in, I don't mess around. Let me give you an example. Go one ahead. Day, one day, all right, from two o'clock in the morning, all right, to 11.30 that night, I must have consumed at least 20,000 calories, no word of a lie. And that was for a lot of sugars. Chocolates, you name it, you know. Domino's pizza. One, one day I had, I had um, five guys, followed by KFC about an hour later. I stopped off at about three different petrol stations. This is on the way, on the way back from Birmingham. You name it, it was non-stop. I was buying cho big bars of chocolate, packs of crisps. For one day, and I, when I do, I do it properly. To be honest, the next day, I looked even leaner. I was vascular. I mean, I was pumped. Sometimes the body needs that refeed. I wouldn't say, yeah. I wouldn't say go that um, crazy. That crazy, but sometimes you need to refeed the body. Yeah. Why do you think the body still stayed lean? I, I think because literally, I was, I was, I was in a deficit. I was literally so depleted. My muscles, my body. The physique was so depleted, it literally needed those calories. And sometimes when you consume it, your metabolism then increases as well, and you, it just kick starts, and you don't even utilize, you don't put on any body fat, you just get a massive pump, and burn more calories as well at the same time. What about any special dieting methods, such as water manipulation, sodium manipulation, especially when traveling over that long distance. Yeah, so when it comes to, I don't get too complicated with it. I mean, I normally like to get myself in condition three, three weeks out from competition, I'm ready to go. So if I'm ready to go three weeks out, I'm not gonna be messing around with any science tests. So what I, the only thing I do do is um, on the day before the competition, I cut my water a little bit, and sit when my mouth is dry and lead into the competition and, and, and until when I go on stage. Um, the other thing I do is before I go on stage, I like to consume a lot of sodium. So whether it's salty rice cakes or pretzels, um, also with sugars as well, and fats. I consume a lot of that just before I go on stage. And that's it really, I don't get too complicated. A lot of people like to so you don't run, do run tests on themselves when <laughs> You know, it's not needed. You don't do it down to the gram? Um, no, not when it comes to sodium in, uh, intake. I just literally pile in. And litres for water? Um, yeah, so I normally will only consume about a litre before, um, on the, like say 24 hours before, if that, if that, yeah. Do you ever set yourself a weight to reach when dieting or do you just focus on your condition and see where your weight ends up? Yeah. That, exactly, I, I like to kind of um, focus on more visuals. I don't focus on weight, I focus on visuals. Um, no reason, weight classes in the physique? No, men's physique is no weight class, it's just height class. Um, as long as I look good, because in the end of the day, the judges is not, doesn't care about your weight, they just care about what you look like, how lean you are, how conditioned, and your proportions. So, in the end of the day, it's good to see what your weight is, but that's not the... You'll get down to 60 kilograms. <laughs> just yeah, I wouldn't do that. I mean, I, I literally was 96 kg on the Olympia stage. When I qualified, I was 89 kg. I mean, I didn't really kind of plan to do it. It just happened. I actually grew a lot in my off season, and I kept my um, kept muscle throughout my prep as well. So, what were your expectations of the Olympia, and did you meet any heroes? <laughs> expectation, <laughs> to be honest, I, had, I didn't have any expectation, I didn't even know what was going to happen. Um, I mean, it was just good to get on that stage, you know, anyway. I mean, I said to someone, top 10 would be really good, top 6 would be um, phenomenal, uh, phenomenal, overwhelming, and first place would be like, I might as well die now. Um, but I got 11th, so I was happy with that, I was happy, I got second call out. I mean, for my first Olympia, having been 11th out of 40 guys up there, some of the guys that I follow on Instagram, and you know, they look phenomenal, and I'm beating them, and I'm thinking, wow, I must have come in good. But for me now, coming 11th, it's just maybe even hungry. I want to break that top 10, break that top six, and um, going from there. I mean, I wouldn't say they're my heroes, but 
I would say um, they've inspired, some of them have inspired me to kind of push harder as well. So, yeah. Have you learned from any of them in the past? I wouldn't say I've learned, but I've learned from the experience of being on that stage and now knowing what I should expect from myself and what to expect on the day. I mean, it's, when they say experience is, is crucial, trust me, it's really crucial. I will be a lot more relaxed on a day and um, kind of know what to expect going forward. For those who aspire to do physique, what was it like to stand on the stage and compete with the likes of Ryan Terry and Jeremy Buendia? I mean, it was it was good to mix it up. To be honest, we were mixing up backstage. Um, they're just normal people at the end of the day, human beings like everyone else watching this. But I mean, they're, they're quite inspiring, you know, just being an ordinary guy, you know, they've made it to the top and done well for themselves. It's good to mix up with them and knowing that I'm on that level playing field as well means that there's still, and there's more room to improve as well. So that, that's, for me, I, I like losing because that's, to be honest, that, that's what makes, that makes me drive even more makes me more hungry just to eat <laughs> and more hungry to train harder. Um, so yeah, it was really good to mix it with, with those guys. Uh, were you happy with the result and what do you think you will need to do to place higher next year? Yeah, to be honest, I was pretty happy with the result. Um, to place higher, I'm just going to grind harder. And you're definitely going to be gonna, there. I will, 100%. I haven't qualified yet, but I'm going to be there. And I'm going to grind harder than ever before. Um, my physique will change, trust me, it's going to change even more. I'm going to bring a different package, even better package than I did already, because now I've experienced how my body uh, reacts, being a little bit heavier. And yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's game time. It's, it's about breaking that top 10, maybe even top 6. And your shirt says strength and struggle. It does. Do you it. think that sums up your journey so far? <laughs> yeah, that's a good shout, that. Struggle. If you're not struggling, okay, you're not training properly, you're not prepping properly, you, you're not going 100% because you have to struggle, you have to put your, your mind and your body through struggle, stress and um, you need to be tired. Yeah. Okay? Too many to people tired. dick around with long rest periods. All these long rest periods and being too scientific with what they're doing, just train hard. Okay, it's simple as that. Train hard and diet hard and trust me, you will bring the best out of your own physique. Alright, and how are you looking now? Okay, I'm four weeks out from the competition, but I'm still just dialing. The I've had a, about a week and a half, two weeks eating, eating my, you know, eating things. Um, American things. American things in Vegas and Spain. I went to Barcelona, but yeah, I'm four weeks out. Going to be dialing in again. Then do look out. I'm going to be doing Moscow Pro. End of. What's end the of date of that? 28th of October. 28th, 29th. Yeah, October. Yeah. Look, if you're interested as well, skip over to my Instagram page. I'm going to plug it, Ryan John Baptiste. I'm doing a seminar, a men's physique seminar um, in November. So do look out for the advertisements, promos for that. Do you know the day and location? That's going to coming out in the next few weeks. On your Facebook page? Uh, Facebook page is Forward Stroke, um, it's good for shout actually. Forward Stroke, official Ryan John Baptiste. Yeah. <laughs> and all this information will be on there and your Instagram, right? Exactly, yeah, all Instagram. Men's physique, it's called What It Takes seminar, the ultimate uh, men's physique seminar, so trust me, it's about all my Olympia prep and everything to go with it, and also it's a one hour posing workshop included. Awesome, great, good to chop it up with you Ryan, peace. Okay, cool. How many reps? Uh, 20 reps, that second squeeze at the top. The same category as Ingrida put State and Shakira Young. Uh, no, I think I'm not sure actually. I think I might be talking about Fourth Arnold Classic. Fourth Arnold Classic. Barcelona. Fourth that British last year. So she's going for the top spot. I'm going for the top spot, man. Pro Club. Yeah. yeah.
buscar. You got any of your own names for them? Not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> Too many burgers. Too many, man. Too many <laughs> Go again. What is it? That's, that's After too many burgers. That's two weeks worth just eating whatever. <laughs> <laughs> when you're when you're an Olympian, yeah. Triceps. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm doing it wrong. You're probably extending a little bit. Yeah. You're probably doing that a bit. It's nature of powerlifting, right? Yeah, where well you start <laughs> using all different muscles. All yeah, we, we like yeah. to bench a lap pull down. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, with bodybuilding, it's good to. It's slightly different, so if you want to get the shoulders, we engage the shoulders and try and reduce the amount of engagement in other muscles. Bodybuilding. We leave shoulders to one day, we chest to another day. You know, try not to uh, bring the two together most of the time, you know. We try not to. Sometimes, yes, they work as synergists together, but... Separation to, yeah. for that separation. We try to. Boom. How many? 20. <laughs> it's crazy different with like a lifter. He just doesn't smash it out, doesn't he? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. What's your favorite? Favorite pose. Gone. Huh? Gone. You can actually do it on the stage, I don't know. <laughs> but I will do it in Moscow. Hit the camera with it. What's your Instagram? 
<laughs> Don't ask me to spell it. Quarter turn to the right. I thought we should do quarter turn. And face the rear. And four turn to the right. Oh, it's too much ruler line in one shot, man.